Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about how good is the jester. Um, a quick uh, reminder of where these videos are coming from, kind of a disclaimer, I guess. Uh, I am approaching this from the perspective of you are playing on the hardest difficulty level of no light, uh, hard mode, and that you're going to be encountering those that, that the biggest challenge that Darkest Dungeon can throw at you, which is that that level of uh, of play. Uh, and the thought process is anything that works in the hardest levels is going to work on the easier levels as well. So the information that I give you regarding that should be applicable uh, for all levels of play. All right, let's take a look at the Jester's stats together. Jester has 35 HP, which is the lowest HP in the game besides the Antiquarian. 35 dodge, which is the highest dodge in the game. I don't like this combination. Um, let's talk about why. I've mentioned it in previous videos, but I think it's worth doing again for the Jester because he is the epitome of the problem with this. All right, on the highest level dungeons in Darkest Dungeon, if you approach the Darkest Dungeon dungeon, say that a couple times quick, guys, uh, you can, on no light mode, you can have enemies with up to 133 accuracy. Uh, with 35 base dodge, which is what the Jester has, um, an enemy has a 98% chance to hit you. Hit percentage caps at 90%. So in other words, you're gonna you're gonna have they're gonna have the maximum chance to hit you, despite the fact you have 35 dodge uh, out there. Which means the 35 dodge is doing nothing for you, which in of itself isn't bad. There's no gain, whatever. But the character is balanced around the fact that they have lower HP and more dodge. So what effectively has happened is you've lost the protection of dodge in that in that dungeon while not gaining any additional protection for HP, which just means you become a low HP character. That's the problem with dodge in this game. Now you could say, well, you could itemize for dodge and having a base of uh, 35 uh, dodge means as you itemize the, the items are more effective because you don't have to overcome the enemy's accuracy. Or you could argue that not all enemies have that high of an accuracy and both those arguments are kind of right um, in the sense that yes, you can itemize for dodge and itemizing on dodge is more effective on the Jester than it is on any other class. That's true. Um, except there is not all that much in the way of dodge gear, and the dodge gear is not all that effective in terms of dodging. Um, in other words, you're still probably not getting that high of a dodge percentage, certainly not enough to be reliable, um, in which case you're still going to run into the fact that if you get unlucky and you have two crits in a row or something, your jester is still probably dead. Um, and the second element of that, the, um, uh, the argument that uh, dodge is still good on lower hit point mobs is absolutely true, and it's more true um, for higher class dodge than it is for lower lower levels of dodge. But most of the time, the the content that is lower levels of hit percentage is also the less threatening, uh, less threatening content. In which case, I'm not too worried about the dodge there either way. So for me, the HP dodge trade off is I, I prefer the, the 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 that breakdown to go in favor of HP as opposed to dodge. All right, Jester is 9 speed. 9 speed is an excellent speed. It's a little bit scary if you are playing a class like the Jester, because the Jester has very low HP, and going very fast with low HP means that if in any part of the last round an opponent hits you and puts a dot or a bleed of any, a, blot, a dot on you, any sort of damage over time ability on you, uh, you still have a fairly strong chance to go ahead of your healer at the beginning of the next round and die to the dot before you can get healing. And that's the number one way I lose characters in Darkest Dungeon is uh, a high high hit with a dot attached to it. So a uh, 9 speed is both a very good thing and also a quite dangerous thing on such a low hit point character. Um, 9.5 crit, um, high crit is good. There's no, no way around that. It's not always the best thing ever. There's some downsides to crit for heroes, but in general, um, more crit is better, and that's quite high crit. Average damage of 10 is quite low. Uh, average sun, res or sun resist of 80 is quite low. Blight resist of 100 is about average. Ble uh, bleed resist of 90 is about average. Lower disease risk uh, list resist even. Um, low move resist doesn't really matter on the Jester because he's so mobile he can move around anyways. Um, 100 debuff resist is a little bit above average, but not that meaningfully above average. 90 disarm starts to be in the range where you can reliably disarm traps, although it's not as good as some of the characters out there. And uh, move of 3 forward and 3 back is quite strong. It means the Jester can go anywhere uh, from any position, uh, which is as strong as it gets in Darkest Dungeon for movement. Um, the Jester is primarily a stress healer with secondary damage dealer. Um, that's the roles the Jester fulfills. Um, let's talk about the skills that let them do that, so let him do that. So the skill we're going to need to talk about first, um, this by the way is the, the bar that I mostly use with Jesters right now. I am experimenting with removing Finale entirely, but let's talk about this. Finale just received a fairly large nerf. It used to be an incredible ability uh, that had uh, 
no restrictions in terms of the number of times you could use it per uh, per fight, and also um, was a much bigger modifier. At the moment, Finale has a um, damage modifier of 50%. It also has a huge accuracy mod, so um, you're going to be at 90% accuracy pretty much always with uh, Finale. You can still miss with Finale, um, even though it says it has 150 base, you always have a cap at 90%. So you can still miss with Finale, but it's... Um, you're not going to miss because the opponent is particularly dodgy. You're just going to miss because you rolled unlucky and you hit that 10% mark. However, the finale damage modifier used to be 150%. So it's a damage modifier, so that meant that finale used to do 250% of your base damage and now does 150% of your base damage. Um, that's quite a big reduction in damage. The damage is now comparable to lunge, which is good damage, um, but it's not quite as much as it used to be. And what it used to be was enough to one hit uh, an opponent uh, in slot 3, generally. Uh, and now it probably is not, and that's a bit of a nerf. Um, that said, it still has a decent crit mod. It's 5% crit mod, which is decent. Um, it now applies a 12-round debuff. I think it's 12. It might be 13-round debuff, uh, which is a minus 25 dodge debuff. But I just finished bashing dodge, so I don't really care too much about the dodge debuff. In the areas where um, uh, it's a big deal... Um, although, to be fair, a negative dodge debuff is... Is, is still a penalty because here's why. In the areas where it did where it didn't matter because the dodge was already to the point where the enemy's accuracy was high enough, my dodge didn't matter. This debuff makes no difference whatsoever. But it now also leaves me vulnerable to the stuff that I wasn't vulnerable to vulnerable to before. In other words, the stuff, the trash mobs that used to be fairly easy are still probably fairly easy, but they now also have the chance of of the increased chance to hit my jester, which makes the jester more fragile already very fragile in the very high difficulty stuff and now more fragile in the lower difficulty stuff. This is definitely a nerf to Finale. This is a big nerf to Finale overall. Finale is also only usable once per round now. Um, the intent seems to be, the designer intent now seems to be to uh, make you build up to using Finale by using other abilities that give Finale a buff, which are Dirk Stab, um, Battle Ballad, Inspiring Tune, or Solo. And then after you stacked up a couple of the damage buffs from using these, then you Finale. There's a big problem with that, and the problem with that is the way that the Darkest Dungeon uh, fights are structured. Now, the structure for Darkest Dungeon fights is a race portion of the fight, where your goal is to kill the high priority targets as soon as possible, followed by a recovery period of the fights, where your goal is to keep low threat targets as long as alive as long as possible while stress healing and healing. And the Jester is an instrumental part no pun intended, uh, to the, the stress healing part of that fight, of the recovery portion of the fight, because the Jester has Inspiring Tune, which is a big stress heal. So in the first part of the fight, you want the Jester doing damage. In the second part of the fight, you want the Jester healing stress. Finale is built the opposite way around now. Finale is designed to be in the first part of the fight, you're using other skills. And in the last part of the fight, after you've charged up Finale, you use Finale to do a bunch of damage to a single target. The thing is, you don't want to do that at the end of the fight. At the end of the fight, you want to keep those low threat, uh, low priority targets alive in order to recover your stress and recover your health, which means you don't really want to build up to finale and then finale. There are a couple exceptions to that. The first exception is if you can build up a little bit towards finale and still hit one of the high priority targets. In other words, in the level five dungeons and uh, often the new content in Crimson Court, you won't be able to kill all of the high threat targets in the first round or two. It might take you three or four rounds, in which case Finale still has a use. It can help kill those, uh, those last, uh, the last remaining high threat targets. And the second exception is in, in a boss fight. In a boss fight, there's actually something to be said about taking a bunch of abilities that build up um, damage on Finale and then using Finale. That, that would make some sense. The boss fights are not really uh, race and recovery fights. They're just pure races, most of the boss fights. It's either a race against damage or it's a race against stress, or sometimes both. Uh, and the goal then is to do as much damage as quickly as possible, in which case um, hitting something in and, and the later stages for a bunch of damage is still fine. You know, you're going to have three or four rounds versus most bosses to, to build up damage on finale. Um, that said, the stuff that builds up damage on finale are Stress Heal, which you're not going to use in a boss fight very often. Uh, and Battle Ballad, which you're probably not going to use in a boss fight very often. Uh, Solo, which you're not going to use in a boss fight very often. I'll tell you why later, but probably not using that. And Dirk Stab. And Dirk Stab, you might use in a boss fight in the sense that it does, uh, it is a, it has no negative damage modifier, so it is just doing Jester damage in terms of damage and giving your buff for the finale. But Dirk Stab is not particularly good damage. The Jester's base damage is fairly low. If we look again at the, the uh, chart at the bottom, the Jester is below average in base damage, um, which means that Dirk Stab really isn't doing very much. So it's a kind of weak attack to be using, although it will build up the finale. Uh, 
And it kind of comes in sharp contrast to how powerful dots are versus bosses. Because bosses act multiple times per round, they have multiple actions. Most of the newer bosses in particular have three or sometimes even four actions per round. Um, that means dots are particularly effective versus them, particularly high crit dots that are gonna tick on for five rounds instead of three rounds. Those are even better versus bosses with multiple actions. It feels like dots are balanced around the assumption that you're often not gonna get the full value from the dots. In other words, in the, in the times where you do get the full value where the dot ticks for its entire duration, uh, they are generally a higher damage ability, especially versus any enemy that has protection than a non-dot based damage. In other words, on bosses, I'm really going to be wanting to use Slice Off, not fucking Dirk Stab, which Slice Off, for whatever reason, is one of the two abilities the Jester has that doesn't charge up Finale, which is kind of painful. So these are big nerfs to Finale. It's going to be difficult to uh, engineer situations in which Finale is good. I still have it on my bar because 150% 150 damage modifier to just hit a target on the first round is still... Not, not 150% damage modifier, excuse me, a positive 50% modifier, so 150% base damage uh, to a target is still okay. It's, it's no way near as good as it used to be, but I'm still kind of of the mindset that I may use this at the beginning of a fight. Um, although that, that minus dodge debuff for 12 or 13 rounds is kind of a big deal. All right, let's talk about Dirk Stab. We kind of mentioned it. Dirk Stab moves you forward um, while doing uh, base damage uh, and charging up Finale. Um, this ability used to be better after Finale, again counterintuitively, because most of the time you want the Jester in position 3, because in position 3 he can stress heal or he can use his bleed abilities, and in position 4 he can't use his bleed abilities, which meant that often you would Finale, maybe stress heal around, move, move forward around, and then maybe use a slice off or something, right? Now uh, if you Finale early, um, Dirk Stab will move you forward, but um, there's, there's less of that reason to, um, to do so, right? So. Yeah, anyways. So, not so sure Dirk Stab is all that good at the moment. The damage on it is pretty low. It used to be a positional thing. You might have less reason to use that positioning with the nerfs to Finale. Um, Harvest is a uh, position 2, position 3 bleed. It bleeds them both. It has low base damage, minus 50%. So, uh, essentially, you're getting... Uh, you're getting 100% damage versus two targets and getting a double three-point bleed. Uh, the bleed scales up, and it doesn't scale up as quickly as the single-target bleed does. But if you're applying a bleed to two targets, that is, of course, more valuable than uh, slightly less bleed on a, or slightly more bleed on a single target with um, the same the same damage mod across that, or even less damage mod across it, really, with the slice off. So when is harvest good? Well, the problem is that doing damage to rank three and rank four is pretty situational. Most of the time, the only time you really want to, or rank two and rank three rather, most of the time you only really want to do that are on a couple boss fights, notably um, the Hag and notably um, the Cannon. Uh, and the Cannon and the Hag's pot are both immune to bleed. So Harvest is not going to help you very much in those scenarios. Um, this may help you a little bit versus the Flesh. Uh, the Flesh is one of the bosses where stacking bleeds is really good. Um, because it doesn't matter wh what part is bleeding, it affects the entirety of the shared health pool, so that can be quite good. Uh, but outside of that, most of the time, I don't really keep this on my bar, because most of the time it's just not worth it. Um, it. tends not to be all that strong a skill. Talked about Finale. Solo is now limited to two uses per uh, battle, uh, which makes no difference whatsoever. Uh, it's still a terrible skill. It was a terrible skill before, and it's a terrible skill now. Uh, solo moves you forward three positions from wherever you are and puts an accuracy debuff on all of the enemies. Um, it's a decent sized accuracy debuff. Um, it also gives you a speed buff and buffs your finale damage. It in of itself does no damage. The thing is, if you think about the way these percentages work out, um, if you have finale, so imagine if you solo once in finale, right? The damage on finale then is plus 100%. Plus 100% means you're doing twice your base damage. If you attacked twice, you would do the same damage as Finale. So if you used two Dark Stabs at 100% damage, it's doing the same damage as one Finale that's been charged up for plus 100% damage. So it takes you two actions. Do you go, you solo forward, and you Finale. That gives you the same damage as if you had just Dark Stab twice. Okay? That's fine. In addition to that, you're getting the accuracy debuff from this and a speed buff on the Jester, both of which are fine. Um, if, But the trade-off is you lose that first round of damage. And often in the first round of damage, you can kill a single target, even on the higher levels, if everybody attacks that target. So you're putting off damage for the, the trade-off is you get this debuff on the opponents and uh, you have put off damage to the next round. 
mostly that doesn't seem to be a very good trade-off for me. Most of the times I don't want to do that. So uh, this ability just remains something that I don't think is very powerful whatsoever. Uh, slice off is rather good. This is a single target nuke uh, that you uh, that applies a bleed. You have to be in position two three to use it, but we'll hit position two or position three. Uh, it has a very decent crit mod for a bleed skill, which means it's good on bosses in particular or any enemies with multiple actions. Um, bleed is very strong in this patch. Uh, lots of enemies are resist are, are not very resistant to bleed. Um, bleed is a big part of this, so that's quite nice. Um, and ov overall, a very just solid damaging skill on the jester. Um, if the opponent's going to last a couple rounds. The downside is it doesn't have a lot of upfront damage. It has a minus 33% damage modifier, but you have Dirk Stab if you need upfront damage on the Jester. Uh, so these two are okay skills for the Jester. Battle Ballad I'm not a huge fan of, um, mostly because of action economy. I rarely find the time to cast this. It is a decent buff. 4 speed, 7 accuracy, and 3 crit is nothing to scoff at, particularly the speed element. And this buff does scale up in value as uh, the character levels up. This is only a level 2 Jester. Um, so it will get better than this even. Um, and Having speed buffs in particular or speed debuffs is very, very valuable. Um, but again, I mostly don't find the time to use this from an action economy uh, perspective. I would rather be finaleing, slicing off, or dirk stabbing, or stress healing, which is why I tend not to have this on my bar. Um, and finally, this is the premier ability of the Jester. This is why you bring a Jester to a group at all, uh, especially now that Finale has been so nerfed, and that is a single target stress heal. It is minus uh, a big chunk of stress and plus some stress resist on future rounds, and it can be used from position 3-4. So um, prior to this patch, I would run Jester in position 1, opening round Finale, move to position 4, often Dirk Stab once to get to position 3 if I needed to keep bleeding. If I didn't need to get to position 3 to keep bleeding, I would just spam stress heals from position four and the recovery portion of the fight. You still want to do roughly that, but you just have less good tools uh, at the start of the fight. So there's just an overall nerf to the Jester, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, let's talk about his camping skills. Four camping skills, like all the other characters. Mockery is so-so. It is a single target stress heal that, uh, um, excuse me, a single target uh, stress increase uh, that gives stress reduction to all other characters, not the Jester. So two characters lose 20 stress, one character gains 20 stress. It's okay. Um, you can finesse that a little bit by running stress resist items on the character you're uh, increasing the stress on. And uh, it is situationally useful if uh, you're getting low stress on one guy and everybody else has high stress. This is a good way to deal with that. But again, with a Jester in the group, you probably don't need a lot of stress camping abilities. Uh, Tiger's Eye is fairly bad. It's a single target uh, accuracy and crit boost, um, mostly for a cost of three. Mostly you can find better ways to boost accuracy, often accuracy and damage over accuracy and crit, which I prefer, um, and you can do it with other buffs. I tend not to run this very often, mostly because it's just better spent elsewhere. Every Rose has its thorn, it's quite strong. It is a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, minus 15 stress to all companions minus the Jester, and a minus 15% stress on future battles for all companions minus the Jester. Um, for a cost of three. This is a better than the therapy dog ability on the hound. Um, it's probably the best uh, group stress reduction camping ability out there. Um, however, it runs into the same problem that all stress healing abilities around the Jester do, which is the Jester does a lot of stress healing all on his own, so he often doesn't need the addition of camping skills to do that. But if you do, this is a very powerful one. And finally, turn back time. Uh, hypothetically, I've never actually used this ability on an afflicted character, but my understanding of the wording on this is it's one companion loses 30 stress regardless, and then if they're afflicted, they lose another 15 stress. So it should be 45 stress on an afflicted character. Um, again, the problem is though, especially for a single target stress guy, 99.9% .9 of the time, the jester is, sing anytime you have one guy whose health, his, his stress is spiked way above the other guys, like a guy at 90 and two guys at 40 or something, the jester is going to be just spamming stress heal on that guy. In other words, this probably isn't going to be needed. And also, if you bring stress down, if you get, if you become afflicted, so if you're at 100, you get 100 stress at some point and you're afflicted, if you ever get that stress down to zero via stress healing, the affliction goes away. So, even if one of my guys had some nasty like stress spike and got stressed the fuck out, and uh, probably in future battles I'll have healed him down to zero stress without this anyways. But there are scenarios where this could be useful. Like if you don't have enough dungeon left to do that, like you get the boss next fight or something, or you know whatever else, this could be a situationally beneficial skill. And it is the value on it is pretty good for the time cost. If you compare that to Encourage, which is 15 stress for two, this is 30 stress for three, and it can be up to 45 stress for three. Okay. 
Um, no special restrictions on the Jester. Um, his bleeds make him very versatile for the current uh, round of uh, content, the Crimson Court DLC. And the Stress Heal is very good for the long, sustained courtyard stuff that you have to do. If you have to fight a million fights in the courtyard, having some stress healing is really valuable. So that's pretty good. Although uh, the Jester is uh, low hit points, so he's a little bit weak to being killed by dots, uh, which is a little bit scary in this content because there's a lot of dot stuff out there. Um, but overall, I'd give the Jester probably an average rating right now. Prior to the finale uh, buff, debuff, uh, I would have given him an excellent or powerful rating or strong rating, uh, whatever the top rating was, uh, would have been. Uh, but right now, I don't think very much of the finale stuff. And he is by far the best stress healer out there still. And stress healers are strong, so we're bringing him along essentially ex only for inspiring tune, which is a little bit bummer because he used to be so much stronger, uh, also as a damage dealer. But he still is a pretty decent role to have, to have that stress healer. All right, guys, hopefully this was interesting and informative. Uh, thanks for watching. I know it's a little bit longer, uh, but there's quite a lot to talk about with the Jester. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.